It's the children who are suffering the most, say aid agencies, of the migrant crisis unfolding in Greece. The UN has warned of a desperate situation along Greece's northern border, which has been unilaterally closed by its neighbor. Infants, it says, are suffering from a lack of food, sanitation and face risks of abuse or separation. Intisar is a migrant from Iraq. We are worried from uh, sick, from the colds. We need the clothes to our children. We need a place to stay. You see our tents, seven persons. As I say, I tell you, we buy these tents. About 24,000 migrants in Greece are in need of housing, and more than 8,000 are stuck in the worsening conditions. The main camp in Indomeni is overwhelmed. Uh, unilateral decisions in terms of uh, closing the border bring chaos. Uh, it, it is now, this situation is inching towards a humanitarian crisis and uh, Greece cannot be left alone to, to deal with all this. In response, the European Union has launched a new aid program worth an initial 700 million euros that mirrors the kind of disaster relief it offers developing nations. The money, to be spent in conjunction with the UN in Greece and other EU countries, will help fund shelter and other basic services. Migrants in France sewed their lips together in protest of their treatment in the Calais camp known as the jungle. The seven men, mostly from Iran, demonstrated as migrants were evicted and part of the shanty town destroyed. Sarwar, a refugee from Iraq, has been living at the camp for six months. I'm planning to go to UK, but how? The border's closed. I can't live into the jungle anymore because Sierra has not leave me alone, destroyed to my shelter, and I don't know where my life is going. He said he did not want to relocate to a container offered by the French government because he said it's like a prison. Authorities continued destroying homes to clear the southern part of the camp on Wednesday. Thousands of migrants fleeing war and poverty have converged on the French port over the past year. Many try to climb onto trains using the Channel Tunnel or into lorries heading to the UK. After Super Tuesday, US presidential frontrunners Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump have been consolidating their wins by reaching out to supporters backing their rivals. Clinton has vowed to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour, a rate fellow Democratic contender Bernie Sanders has advocated for years. It's a move which may go down well ahead of the next round of voting on Saturday, March the 5th. Meanwhile, Sanders, who won his home state of Vermont along with three others on Tuesday, has vowed to pursue the battle for nomination in the 35 states yet to vote. Sanders says his campaign has been consistently dismissed by pundits, whom he says have been wrong from day one. After his seven-state win, Republican Donald Trump has proclaimed himself a unifier of both his party and the nation. But it's a description veteran Republicans reject and are said to be taking out so-called attack ads against the divisive Trump. Stopping the billionaire's election machine looks increasingly difficult. Republican rival Ted Cruz has called on other contenders to drop out and pull in behind him. So far, only Ben Carson has signaled his withdrawal. Turkish police moved in to disperse hundreds of protesters in the mainly Kurdish city of Diyarbakir on Wednesday. At least 33 people were arrested. Locals were complaining at months of government-backed security operations to root out PKK militants, particularly in the district of Sur, which has been under lockdown since December. The pro-Kurdish opposition People's Democratic Party, or HDP, claimed civilians have been the main casualties. We don't want the ruling AK party's murky war in our cities, in our lands or our country. We dare to take to the streets against this. This protest was against those who dare to start a war. It's a crime to ban this protest or say it's illegal. Turkey's Prime Minister accused the HDP, which is the third biggest party in Parliament, of collaborating with terrorists. For God's sake, have you ever heard them ask the PKK, why do you stay in our politics by taking guns in your hands? The HDP don't want peace. On the contrary, they want to drag Turkey into chaos by collaborating with terrorists, and we will not allow that.
Later, the authorities partially lifted a curfew in the town of Jezre. A handful of cities in Turkey's southeast have been engulfed in the worst violence since the 1990s, following a breakdown of a two-year ceasefire with the autonomy-seeking PKK. They were hoping they could form a government, but the numbers in Parliament did not add up. The head of the Socialists in Spain, Pedro Sánchez, has failed in a first vote to become Prime Minister and form a minority coalition. Only 130 of the 350 parliamentarians voted yes to the plan which was drafted in response to inconclusive elections in December. I take the floor to announce on behalf of the Popular Party our vote against the candidacy of Mr. Sanchez. You haven't moved a finger to form the government, he said, and you probably think today someone will give it to you as a gift. Mr. Rajoy, you should have been standing here today if you had the courage, the political courage, said Sanchez. You should have been here at this podium talking and not sitting there listening. The Conservative Popular Party has already attempted without success to form a government. The head of the Podemos party said after this failure, negotiate with us, Mr. Sanchez. For brotherhood and the interest of the Spanish people, negotiate for a program and a government of real change. A second vote is due on Friday, but experts say Sanchez is still unlikely to win and new elections could be on the cards. North Korea has fired several short-range projectiles only hours after the United Nations Security Council voted to impose fresh sanctions on the isolated state. South Korea's defense ministry said it was trying to determine if the projectiles launched were short-range missiles or artillery fire. After nearly two months of negotiations, the UN unanimously adopted a resolution significantly expanding international sanctions against Pyongyang after its January the 6th nuclear test and recent rocket launch. The North insists its missile program is purely scientific, but the US, South Korea and even its ally China say such rocket launches are aimed at developing intercontinental ballistic missiles. A piece of metal found on a Mozambique beach is possibly from a Malaysia Airlines plane that went missing en route from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing in March 2014. The location of the metre-long fragment is said to be consistent with models of where ocean drifts could carry debris. If confirmed, it would be the second piece to wash up on a beach. Last year, a section of the plane's wing was found off Reunion Island. Despite an extensive deep water search led by Australia, flight MH370 and all 239 people on board have never been found. Based on satellite communications data, the plane is thought to have crashed into the Indian Ocean. As to why it came down, experts are still unsure. Four months after what's described as Brazil's worst environmental disaster, a compensation deal's been struck. The dam, which burst in November in the state of Minas Gerais, left this muddy chaos in its wake, killing 19 people, leaving hundreds homeless and polluting a major river. Now the mining company Samarco, Anglo-Australian giant BHP Billiton and its partner Vale have reached a deal with the government to pay at least an estimated 4.5 billion euros in damages over 15 years. <laughs> President Rousseff said we welcome this deal with Samarco as part of the process of repairing the damage to the population as well as an environmental project and the process of helping the river Doce recover. <laughs> The spill of mud and mining waste wiped out plant and animal life along a 650-kilometre stretch of the river and reached Brazil's coastline. More than a quarter of a million people were left without water and areas of protected tropical forest were devastated. The payments were spread out over several years. The deal doesn't cover criminal inquiries. After the disaster, the government took legal action against the mining companies.